Home to some of the world's top ranking colleges, United Kingdom attracts some of the world's best and brightest students year after year, including Indians. But with so many good options to choose from, how does one choose an institution over the others? What does the admission process involve? We will answer all these questions on this special episode of Education UK. Born into a family of bureaucrats, Jyotsna represents the self-assured and aspirational young India. At the end of her schooling, Delhi initially seemed to be the best place to pursue her graduation in commerce from. And now the pursuit to fulfill her professional ambitions is taking her to the UK for a master's in international business management. I have pursued BCom honours and there were various modules in, that, in this particular course, one of which was international business and I kind of like that subject a lot. While most of her friends were going to the UK for further studies, to realize her dream of procuring a master's degree from the UK, she had to convince her parents first. There are several resistance because of the societal norms and etc. etc. Girl, child, why so, <laughs> so far away? Uh, so these were the simple reasons uh, and also we need uh, a lot of money, finance, so everything should be catered and taken care of. Her brother Ashish, an aspiring bureaucrat, went to great lengths to convince the family to allow Jyotsna to chase her dreams. With the first hurdle taken care of, Jyotsna started looking at the various options, just like her brother. She knew the importance of research, penning down a list of universities. Making a list of universities was the first step in the process. One of uh, the universities to which I've applied was Manchester University. It was the, at the top priority and uh, I luckily got an unconditional offer from them. Choosing from the long list of reputed universities one should apply to is not an easy task, but not surprisingly, Jyotsna seemed to have a strategy chalked out. Uh, you start from which course do you want to take up, then which universities have that course, then what about their ranking, what about their research, um, like the budget cost of living is also a big deal that you have to keep in mind. Their combined efforts worked. A proud brother Ashish says he was overjoyed when Jyotsna received an unconditional offer from Manchester University. She leaves for the UK in September. If uh, she goes overseas, she will be first person in our family, whole family, whole relatives, everyone. She will be the first person going abroad. And uh, the matter of fact is the studies and the environment, rule of law, the cultural hub, the integration there, people coming from all over the world, the cultural integration is not possible everywhere. It is unique in United Kingdom. So that was the main idea. Choosing a course and college and arranging the funds for it are a few of the first things to do. But UK universities and colleges do not grant admission based just on your marks. In fact, you're required to make a case for yourself. You're expected to write a statement of purpose or SOP, describing your strengths and your key skill areas. Next up, find out how to write an SOP and what are the things that you have to avoid and things you must keep in mind while writing one. Statement of purpose or personal statement is a critical part of the admission process. We all know about the importance of first impressions and since admissions committees read personal statements to compare different applicants, take this opportunity to describe your ambitions, skills and experience and what makes you suitable for the course. As an international student, there are a few extra things you should mention in your statement of purpose, particularly why you wish to study in the UK rather than your own country. Extracurricular activities are given a great deal of importance alongside academic achievements. Experts advise it is better to write the statement of purpose over a period of time and redraft it at least a few times before finally submitting it. With an acceptance letter in hand, the only thing which stands between you and your dream college is the visa. And here's how you get one. 
I'm really nervous because I'm here to apply for my visa and everything hangs on it, whether I go to UK finally or not. If I don't get my visa, then my journey to UK will end here and it would be very much painful for me. Hi, I'm Arshi. This is where my journey began at the undergraduate course in New Delhi. And now I'm off to UK to do my Masters in International Relations and I'm really excited about it because it's the best place to study. Oh, I'm worried about the documents because I believe, you know, uh, if everything is in order, your visa is not going to be denied. If everything is in order. I have checked, double checked, triple checked my documents and I've made sure everything is in perfect order. But what if something, something goes wrong? I'm really nervous about it. I'm excited that this is the opportunity that I'm going outside of my country to explore a new world, to explore something new.